The Baiji, a species of river dolphin also known as the Yangtze river dolphin or Chinese river dolphin, is a truly unique animal with a whole host of cool anatomical traits and a complex taxonomic backstory. Not only that, but it will go down in history for a very significant, yet absolutely tragic reason. It's probably the first recorded instance of a dolphin species being made extinct by the actions of humans. Baiji are relatively small creatures for a cetacean, reaching lengths of about 2.5 metres, and these animals possess many adaptations that make them extremely well suited to their river habitat. Like many other river dolphin species, the Baiji has a long narrow beak that's slightly upturned, containing rows of conical teeth. The forehead appears bulbous, as it contains the melon, an organ important for echolocation, and the blowhole is positioned slightly to the left side of the head. Another similarity with other river dolphin species is the unfused cervical vertebrae in the Baiji's neck, which allows for more flexibility in this area, and the broad pectoral fins, useful for manoeuvring throughout their environment. Unlike some other river dolphins, such as the Indus river dolphin, Baiji have functional eyes, however they are greatly reduced compared to those present in oceanic dolphins. The Baiji belongs to a group called Lipotidae, a family included within the toothed whales, which are technically called odontocetes. There are only two genera classified within the Lipotidae family, the Baiji and a fossil form called Parapontoporia. There may also be another extinct genus, but it's unclear at the moment. Since Parapontoporia has been extinct since the end of the Pliocene epoch, the Baiji, which is technically named Lipotes vexillifera, was the only member of this family to make it through to modern times. And sadly, that means that with the probable extinction of the Baiji, we haven't just lost a single species. It's also the end of an entire family of mammals. So, how did this disastrous decline in population occur? A combination of different factors seem to have been to blame, but one of the most deadly influences was entanglement in fishing gear. It's thought that during the 1970s and 80s, over half of the observed deaths amongst Baiji were directly caused this way, and the animals were often seen with cuts and scars caused by fishing hooks. Hooks were also recovered from inside the stomachs of some deceased individuals, and in addition the dolphins ended up getting caught in devices such as gill nets and fike nets. Fike nets and a type of hook known as a rolling hook were banned in the Yangtze, partly due to the damage they were doing to Baijis. However, it was not always possible to enforce these laws. Another banned fishing method that nevertheless still took place in the Yangtze and caused great harm to the river dolphins was electric fishing, which has been reportedly observed to have electrocuted Baijis, killing them immediately. As well as directly killing the cetaceans, it's thought the electric shocks also affected the Baijis' prey, restricting how much they had to feed on. With the continued industrialization of China, more and more vessels started to use the Yangtze River, and this brought about another serious problem for the Baiji, strikes with propellers. There is direct evidence that the river dolphins have been killed and severely injured by collisions with boats and their propellers, and more vessels on the water would also have increased the amount of noise pollution being emitted. Other issues caused as a result of China's industrialization include the effects of increased agriculture, as lakes that Baijis used to inhabit, for example Dongting and Poyang lakes, became much shallower due to silt running into them as a result of deforestation and agricultural development occurring nearby, and by the 1990s the animals were no longer seen in these bodies of water. Development within the waterways of the main Yangtze River channel itself also made life for the Baiji more difficult, with dams being constructed that blocked off the movement of the dolphins, restricting them to smaller and smaller areas. There was actually a gate for a ship lock leading off to a tributary where a dead Baiji was found, presumably having been killed by the structure. A particularly damaging development was the construction of the Three Gorges Dam, which led to colder water being released downstream of the dam, as well as disrupting the flow of the water so that countercurrents, a key habitat that Baijis favoured, no longer occurred for many kilometres of the river. This habitat loss was accompanied by an increased level of polluted water being sent into the Yangtze, and in the 90s an estimated 16 billion cubic metres of wastewater was being deposited into the river every single year, about 12 billion of which was likely badly polluted and mostly untreated. Conservation efforts were of course made in order to attempt to avoid the complete extinction of this species. The Baiji became legally protected in China, and deliberate killing and harming of the animals was prohibited. This undoubtedly helped the creatures, however stopping everyone from using fishing methods that resulted in Baiji mortalities was not possible. Once it was clear that this species would need our immediate help, a decision was made to start creating a semi-natural breeding population somewhere other than the main channels of the Yangtze. The Tianyizhou National Baiji Reserve was set up in an oxbow lake next to the Yangtze, an expedition set out to try to capture and relocate as many Baijis as they could find. However, these animals proved incredibly hard to catch. During the 1990s, there were six different expeditions that went to locate and move the dolphins in the river, each of which lasted for two to three months. 
but it seemed it was too late to establish a successful breeding population. In 1995, a female baiji was actually caught and was immediately transported to the reserve. However, just seven months later she was found dead, entangled in the net that was separating the lake from the river. A group of finless porpoises had also been living in the lake, and it seemed that competition with these other critically endangered cetaceans may have caused the baiji to starve to death. The last known living baiji was a male named Chi Chi that had been rescued and rehabilitated from the river in 1980, and he remained in captivity at the Institute of Hydrobiology of the Chinese Academy of Sciences until he died in 2002. A possible sighting of a baiji in the river was made in 2004, however when an expedition lasting six weeks in 2006 failed to find a single baiji left in the Yangtze, the species was declared functionally extinct. Now it is possible that the expedition could have missed a few of the animals, and indeed some other possible sightings in more recent years could support this, but with so few individuals remaining there is little hope they will ever be able to recover. The IUCN currently classifies the baiji as critically endangered and possibly extinct, due to the occasional reported sightings of the animals, though they say they are waiting on the results of another survey that was planned for late 2017, and if this expedition failed to find any, it seems likely the species has become completely wiped out. Sadly, even if there are a few individuals that are still surviving, there are nowhere near enough to create a stable breeding population anytime soon, and so the baiji seems doomed to extinction no matter what. This would also represent the first time a megafaunal vertebrate has been documented going extinct in over 50 years, with the last animals this happened to being the Japanese sea lion and the Caribbean monk seal back in the 1950s. Apologies for this fairly depressing video, though I think it's important to know about our failures in conservation so that we can avoid repeating them in the future. This video is also a bit of a hint for what next week's topic is about, which is a pretty massive project and something I've been working on for a long time now, and will probably be among the longest of the videos I've ever done. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.